important natural resources and one that all living things need to survive. Thankfully, here in Tucson, we have plentiful, easy access to water. We get it from sink, showers, hoses. Whenever we need water, we have a seemingly endless supply. Hi, I'm Malia, a student here in Tucson. Join me on a tour as we travel throughout our city to learn more about water. All our daily water usage really adds up. How much water do you think each of us use every day? 80 gallons. That's 80 gallons. This is one gallon. You use 80 of these every day. That's 80 gallons. Eight zero, folks, 80 gallons. Wait, really? All 80? Okay. Wait, hold on a sec. Phew. Like I said, 80 gallons. Let me tell you, that's a lot of water. I don't have to move these back, right? So where do we use 80 gallons every day? Let's take a quick look around the house. Every day, on average, we use 10 gallons of water in the shower. 16 gallons flushing the toilet. And another 10 gallons at faucets. 13 gallons doing laundry. Around 21 gallons watering plants. And finally, another 10 gallons for leaks and other water uses. Okay, question time. So we all use around 80 gallons of water daily. Are there other things in your life that use water? The 80 gallons of personal water usage doesn't include the water that was already used on your behalf to make things like food, clothing, or electronics. Let me explain with a sandwich. The growing of grain and manufacturing behind a slice of bread takes 12 gallons of water. So we're already at 24 gallons before we've even put anything on our sandwich. A single serving of turkey requires 160 gallons of water. Add a slice of cheese and that's another 24 gallons. Add some tomato, onion, and a little piece of lettuce and our delicious sandwich already has a water footprint of nearly 250 gallons of water. Mmm. The water use doesn't stop there. What about the water used in a simple outfit? To make a single t-shirt, it takes 400 gallons of water just to grow the cotton. And a pair of blue jeans? You're looking at another 2,000 gallons of water. Look at him, in the jeans. He's wearing 3,000 gallons of water and wearing it well. What about water use in our phones and other electronic devices? With all the rare earth minerals and parts made around the world, it takes thousands of gallons of water to produce a single smartphone. Please don't make me carry that many gallons. So are you with me now? Everything you eat, buy, and use took a tremendous amount of water to produce. But where does all this water come from? Looking around Tucson, I don't see any flowing rivers or lakes, do you? Okay, time for another question. Where do you think we get our water from here in Tucson? We get our water from three primary sources. But first, you should know, not all water is the same. The earth is over 90% water, but nearly all of that 97.5% to be exact, is salt water, with only the remaining 2.5% being fresh water that we humans need to survive. This map shows the average annual rainfall across the United States. Here in Tucson, in the Sonoran Desert, we only get around 12 inches of rainfall each year. So where do we get our water? Well, before we can answer that question, we need to take a quick detour. Most of you probably remember learning about the water cycle. Rain falls from clouds and some water runs off and sinks into the ground, recharging the groundwater in our aquifer. 
The rest evaporates and condenses to form clouds, and the whole cycle starts all over again. And this brings us to our first source of water, groundwater. Groundwater is water that is located underground. Phew, really worked hard on that definition. Everybody still with me? We pump our groundwater from rocky areas underground called aquifers. Early Tucson settlers relied primarily on river water and shallow wells. However, in the past hundred years, as the population grew and new technology allowed for deeper wells, our water table gradually dropped and our rivers eventually stopped flowing year-round. Back in the early 1900s, we only had to dig 25 feet to access our groundwater. By the 1940s, that was 75 feet, and today our water table is at around 275 feet below ground. By the 1960s, it became clear that Tucson needed another source of water. Enter the Central Arizona Project, or CAP. Constructed in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, the CAP is a 336 mile canal system that brings Colorado River water all the way from Lake Havasu to Tucson. Think about that, a 300 mile aqueduct, basically a man-made river, moving more than 1.3 billion gallons of water every day. To make it more difficult, Tucson is located uphill from Lake Havasu, meaning that not only is the water pumped more than 300 miles, but it also has to be pumped uphill, nearly 3,000 feet, requiring a lot of electricity. In fact, the 14 pumping stations along the CAP Canal are the single largest user of electricity in the state of Arizona. And that just gets the water to Tucson. Once it arrives, Colorado River water goes into massive infiltration basins like this. Here at the Southern Avra Valley Storage and Recovery Project, or SAVSARP, Colorado River water slowly percolates down hundreds of feet, being naturally filtered and cleaned, eventually mixing with our groundwater and recharging our aquifers. And here's our Colorado River water, filling one of over 20 water basins in the Tucson area. If you could track the progress of one drop of water, it would take almost nine days to get from Lake Havasu to Tucson, and around two weeks to filter down to our aquifer. Then, that drop might stay underground for years before it's pumped up and delivered to our homes. Currently, we're recharging and storing more water in our aquifer than we are using adding to Tucson's water supply for the future. Okay, so we've got groundwater and Colorado River water, but Tucson has a growing population, and we're affected by drought and higher temperatures resulting from global climate change. So, we need a third source of water. What could that be? To answer that, let's flush the toilet. And follow that water to Agua Nueva, our new wastewater treatment plant. Water that we've used in sinks, showers, and yes, toilets, ends up here at the wastewater treatment plant. Through a process using filters, microorganisms, and chemicals, our water is cleaned into what we call reclaimed or recycled water. This recycled water is distributed through purple pipes to water plants at parks, schools, and businesses throughout Tucson. Currently, recycled water meets water quality standard for plants, but not for people to use yet. Time for one more question. How do people fit into nature's water cycle? So, we've got nature's water cycle and human use of groundwater, Colorado River water, and recycled water. Where does this leave us? With the modified water cycle, the urban water cycle, where we are pumping up groundwater, bringing in Colorado River water, and recycling our wastewater. So how do we get this mixture of groundwater and Colorado River water to our homes? The short answer is, Tucson Water has an extensive system of wells, reservoirs, and pipes that transport clean water to all of Tucson. From control rooms around the city, Tucson Water operates over 200 wells, 
monitors over 50 water storage facilities and maintains over 4,600 miles of distribution pipelines. And that's not all! Tucson Water performs over 14,000 water quality tests each year to ensure that every time you brush your teeth, hop in the shower, or fill up your water bottle, you are receiving safe, clean water. Even though we have three sources of water and a seemingly endless supply, our water resources are limited and very precious. So it's still really, really important for each and every one of us to do our part to conserve water. So what can you do to save water? Okay, I want you, yes, you in the back, I want each and every one of you to think up three ways you personally can use less water. Be prepared to share your ideas when a Tucson water presenter comes to your classroom. You will learn more about our water sources and simple things that you and your family can do every day to conserve water, save money, and ensure Tucson's water future.